close to war. <laughs> So in terms of the content form, the goal overall is just to get your perspectives with mm -hmm. online teaching, your experience. I know MCCP has some online courses or mm -hmm. some content delivered hybrid. And the goal is to see what we're finding in terms of like the review of the literature is that the actual technology and its functions doesn't super matter when it comes to acceptance of technology. Okay. It's more like the behavioral pieces and like the social influences and like the cultural pieces that matter. Mm -hmm. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just your experience with teaching at that level. And I'm specifically looking at graduate school. Okay. So I'm not gonna name the institution. Mm -hmm. Not naming any of the participants. So you can try. You can speak freely, as much as it makes sense. And if at any point you feel like you don't want to answer anything or you don't feel like you have an answer for anything. That's okay, so. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. And then you can always email me the consent form consent when you get to sign it. So, I know you have many roles. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe yourself as a leader in terms of being the program director of MCCP? Hmm. <laughs> or in any of your other leadership roles. Yeah, no, let's, uh, if, if, I think it's just easier for me to stick with one. Yeah. So with MCCP. Um, I would say I'm efficient, mm -hmm. inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I have to admit that I've always been blessed with a really supportive team which makes my job easier. easier. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's what... Okay, um, so in terms of efficient and inclusive, can you give an example of a time that you've kind of embodied this inclusive leadership? So one of the things with MCCP is that people teach in that program pro bono. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the fact that we've been able to, we're now heading into our fifth cohort, mm -hmm means I've been really good at convincing <laughs> people <laughs> to give back. And I think right. I've found that everyone really who teaches in the program, they are committed to building capacity, psychological capacity in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, I've used that as the way to say, hey, yeah. Um, but interestingly, again, I haven't had to go back to the same people and, and, and get their recommitment for another year. It's been just a pretty awesome. seamless, yeah. Okay. Seamless That's nice. So. so when you think of leadership in the context of leading a successful online program or a hybrid program, mm -hmm. what leadership characteristics do you think are particularly important in that context? Being flexible, uh -huh. um, which is something I struggled with when we had to pivot uh -huh. to online teaching during the pandemic because when we developed the program I remember um, Dr. McPherson asking me is there any part of this program that you would like to put online because I mean MBA had it all of the other mm -hmm. and I'm like ah nope <laughs> we need this to be hands on in person mm -hmm. fully immersive and then COVID said oh really and we had to make that shift mm -hmm. Um, so allowing persons, I, I worried, I understood why we had to do it, obviously, and we're more than happy to do it, yeah. but I worried then whether we were providing the same quality mm -hmm. of instruction mm -hmm. as we did with in the person. previous cohorts in person. And to be honest, the, that particular cohort, because they would have had one year in person, mm -hmm. one and a half. No, one year. Yeah. Just about. And then had to pivot online. There were some courses that, because they lend themselves to in person, mm -hmm. like for example, assessments. Mm -hmm. Psychology wasn't, we weren't doing assessments online. Mm -hmm. If you're giving, if you're doing a psychological evaluation of a person, uh, any a neuropsych eval, the person had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Um, having said that, and for obviously for that cohort, we had to delay their graduation date mm -hmm. because, again, in terms of practical placement, mm -hmm. can't right? Because there was like a, a general emergency situation kind of happening right. in the world. So mm -hmm. that had to happen. 
However, since then, obviously the field of psychology has caught up. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the good things that came out of that is that then the subsequent cohort, they were able to get training doing assessments online. Right teletherapy, so mm-hmm. providing psychological support online, because that's not going anywhere, mm-hmm. right? And so, it worked out for the good, mm-hmm. but at the time it was happening, it was like... Very stressful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you had to be flexible, how did you kind of demonstrate that flexibility to your faculty who are teaching, who are probably in the same mental state of yeah. distress as everyone else? Um, and yeah, I mean, we had to have a, we had a conversation and mm-hmm. just talking about whether because I think everybody was kind of worried about oh my gosh the quality what and it was saying okay let's if if we need to extend if it means that we need to extend the term so to speak so for example the spring term if we need to pull in some weeks from summer then we then we do that mm-hmm. and also letting them know that it is okay. Also, right. if they needed time mm-hmm. to give the class, because well, I remember there were a couple of courses that kind of gave the class almost like a week or two weeks off, mm-hmm. because they, faculty was also struggling with yeah. this, right? Um, and you had families, you had online school at home with the kids and, and stuff like that. So just kind of giving them that space to first take care of themselves, because again, I had to be mindful that they were doing this. <laughs> out of love and passion mm-hmm. for the field and so um, yeah and I mean it, it worked out pretty well and even even now so now even though we're back in person we still have courses that are being have a hybrid yeah hybrid model. okay so that was really helpful for the context we're going to talk a little bit about the effort involved mm-hmm. in offering it in that format so what skills or factors do you think play an influence in your effectiveness as an online in- course instructor Keeping students' attention. Okay. <laughs> For me, I get such... I pull my energy from the people in front of me. Mm-hmm. And that, for me, was such a challenge online. It's like, how do I... Because I also know I zone out. When we used to have these online meetings, I'm like, okay, I'm just supposed to hop on a meeting. Let me put some clothes in the washer. I, my, my, my attention was divided. Yeah. And I wasn't um, fooling myself into thinking (laughs) my students were, you know, Uh fully engaged inside that screen. (laughs) Um, So I I felt that I had to be more creative Uh in terms of holding their attention, Uh but also understanding that if somebody needed to be off camera, because again, we were all in our homes at the time, um, and not participating as they probably would yeah. have. Um, and I tend to, my style typically would be to poke at people, kind of call on you if right. you want. And I had to resist that on, in the online, when we, especially when we in just the initial. started. Mm-hmm. In the, yeah, because I recognize that, hey, we're all trying to kind of figure out this. Um, but yeah, that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so can you describe the initial steps of transitioning um, to online teaching and mm-hmm. I, I know some of that would be the emergency pandemic piece but also kind of post pandemic when you decided to keep some of the online content so post pandemic um, the reason why we kept some of the online um, parts and kind of created hybrid courses again some faculty moved mm-hmm. and so they're in other countries but still wanted to contribute um, and I'm going to say again free. So I wasn't about to say, oh no, sorry, thanks, I'm going to look for someone else. No, because, you know, <laughs> um, they know what it is we're trying to accomplish. So that's one of the reasons why we also kept that hybrid model. Uh-huh. Um, so faculty availability and and also the feedback that we got from some students is that in terms of that, it also gave them a little bit of flexibility. Uh-huh. So you may have had, you know, you have a student who's living in the north of the island. Uh-huh doesn't necessarily have to come to campus four or five days a week. There are a couple of courses that are being done, right? right? Uh Um, So, I mean, all in all, it it really allowed for persons that that flexibility. Um, The courses I teach, however, Uh I am back to in person. person. So, 
in terms of making the decision, like faculty are away, some students want the flexibility. How did you go from like, okay, this is something we should offer, to actually offering it? Like, what steps kind of went into that, like implementation steps? I had a conversation with the School of Graduate Studies because mm-hmm. I ended the day, um, the program does fall under the School of Graduate Studies. And I remember Dr. McPherson again asking, <laughs> coming back, and he was like, almost like, tail tucked in, yes, Dr. McPherson, we are going to do a hybrid model. <laughs> Um, and so it really goes up to us to just kind of decide how we wanted. So, okay. so typically what I would do is meet with the faculty who's teaching for the next term mm-hmm. and talk about, okay, you, your course is coming up um, next term. Are there any aspects of that yeah. you would want to do online? Because I also want to let the students, because we teach by cohorts, right? So I would also want to let them know that, okay, for this course, mm-hmm. It's going to be fully online. Okay. For this course, is going to be some online, some in person. For this course, is going to be fully in person. So right. at least they're also kind of some prepared plan. mentally and, and otherwise okay. for that. makes sense. That, so, yeah. in terms of challenges, were there any challenges? Were they? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, initially, I think again, persons having access to yes, everybody had a laptop, mm-hmm. but how many persons? necessarily was ready to be on Zoom and all of that stuff. So in terms of the, the hardware ability mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, Did you have to do anything to manage that? Yeah. For that cohort in particular, I remember there were a couple of students who either the laptop couldn't Zoom? facilitate like Zoom and sessions, stuff like yeah. that. Um, and so it was... But, but I have to say, you know, that cohort in particular they really supported each other and okay. so they were able to okay so donna can't can log in but i'm going to take notes and whatever and okay. then we were recording as well right. and then posting it on the okay um yeah so that that was one of the challenges um and i think just for the faculty in general being able to especially like i said the assessment piece that that part was a struggle. How did you how did you manage and navigate the assessment piece? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, Dr. Lat. So basically, she would be on Zoom mm-hmm. doing an assessment, mm-hmm. and <laughs> it was yeah. Um, and then I'm trying to remember how we did it with the students. So they would have still had to find somebody. Oh, okay. Right? To practice on. But initially, because of the issues we were having, mm-hmm. um, we did allow them to practice on each other, which typically okay. we don't okay. allow. Um, but once we came back in person, because remember for that for that cohort, their timeline was extended. Yeah. Again. So once we came back in person, we had a lot of practice okay. happening. And then during their practicum, we had to make sure that right. they were getting more practice with those assessments. And so how do you do it now in terms of that piece? Is that piece offered in person? No. So here's the thing. It, it's both now. Okay. We have a hybrid because Dr. Blackman, one of our stalwarts in neuropsych assessment, she's mm-hmm. in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's still providing. And again, because like I said, psychology has caught up also. So a lot of the assessments now do have yeah. a virtual modality for um, for administration. Um yeah, so as, as horrible as the pandemic was, mm-hmm. I think two two good things came out of that. Teletherapy, mm-hmm. one, um, allowing persons to be in their own space, um, being more comfortable, mm-hmm. um, and giving you the flexibility. When you think of barriers to accessing care, what if it's that I don't have money for a bus fee to come all the way to right. St. George or whatever? That was no longer an issue. Mm-hmm. What we had to do, though, was basically educate clients on... Um, the expectations. Mm-hmm. So it can be we're providing therapy and a relative passing and you're like, hey, come meet me. And right. <laughs> right? So it was finding a quiet place yeah. for us to still have yeah. therapy. But, um, oh, something I just remembered. Mm-hmm. That semester, the students had to do a health behavior intervention. Mm-hmm. And again, that's usually in person. Mm-hmm. But they got so creative because they, they, all, they all had to end up doing it online. Because I remember for one particular um, group, um, they were doing it with a, a church. Mm-hmm. And you remember churches now also yeah. were online. 
um, and so they did like stress man. It, it worked out really, really well, really well um, because everything was online, but they also got really creative okay. in how they were able to deliver those interventions. So it sounds like the students had a, a good time in terms of transitioning to that, or, or making the best of the Making situation. the best of it. I'm not sure about the good <laughs> part, but making the best of it. But also recognize one of the things that we really tried to do was to highlight how much we appreciated the way that they were able to adapt right um and, and and make the shift and make it work right yeah did you have to do anything for your faculty to normalize that teaching online experience i don't think i did anything intentional other than having that initial this is what we're doing mm -hmm. but it's like i said if you needed to take the time if you need a couple of weeks you to kind of get yourself sorted if we need to extend the, the the term by a couple of weeks then we do that if if you needed to um because again the registrar i think i mean everyone was in adaptability mode mm -hmm. right so even if grades had to be turned in you know yeah. it takes, uh, <laughs> incomplete for that term and then yeah. we, you know you know so we had that flexibility but i don't remember us being intentional really okay. about okay. yeah so in terms of you mentioned not really having a budget for this, but everybody's kind of voluntarily mm -hmm. doing it. Do you have to do anything to get buy-in for them to want to opt into the online format in particular? No, I think everybody recognized that this is what we have to do. I mean, Grenada was closed. <laughs> <laughs> what about now, like, po like, you know, when some people have returned in person? Even with the online format? Yeah. No, because again, I think it comes back to having that flexibility. Um, there are still a couple of courses that, one course in particular uh, with individual behavior therapy mm -hmm. that was fully back in person. Mm -hmm. But what I asked that the, the faculty who were in charge of that course to do is to still illustrate how yeah. teletherapy can be done. So then that way we don't lose that component. So right. It is so now part of that syllabus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were there any other stakeholders like graduate studies or anybody that you had to get any kind of buy-in from in that decision? No. Nah. Okay. I think they've been pushing back for a while, so COVID helped with that. I have to say that they were also very supportive, that, he, that you know, Dr. McPherson and his team, would, they checked in right. pretty regularly. Is there, is there anything that you need? Is there anything that, yeah. So we, we got, um, we definitely got support from them. And actually they, the way that we track our hours, mm -hmm. Um, is a you know software that we use time to track mm -hmm. um, and so because we had to extend the students timeline it was an expense that we hadn't obviously budgeted okay. for and graduate study stepped in okay and took care of that so yeah we That's definitely nice. got the support yeah yeah so in terms of teaching online like offering this program online as the program leader what specific tasks are you responsible for how do you make the magic happen <laughs> Um, okay, be a little more specific for me. Okay, so an example might be uh, having to contact ECT or anybody. Do you have to get, you know, any special permissions or like in terms of a semester starting? Mm -hmm. Do you have to get any special software, hardware? Do you have to request anything? Or is it the sim similar to the way you would? Yeah, it is similar to the way we, we did it before. So okay. it's, it's really just, like I said, checking in with the faculty to see, okay, how would you like Right, so it's like the communication this. piece is yeah. the primary yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, what kind of changes mm -hmm. were required in the culture of the program in terms of the faculty, like that group, mm -hmm. that little department in that sense? What kind of cultural, ch how cultural changes were required as you shift from being in person, being used to seeing students, mm -hmm. and connecting with them, and then shifting to online? Were there any changes there? I don't know, I think everyone just kind of struggled with the engagement piece mm -hmm. with the students. Mm -hmm. so I remember that coming up in our end of term meeting, that term, just like, I felt some students, you know, persons would say, yeah, you know, X person, kind of, I, I, I don't feel that they were connected as, yeah. as before. Um, so we were all kind of struggling with, with that piece. Um, but I mean... I think the one of the, the advantages we had, because obviously we're all, you know, we're all psychologists and also trying to, trying to uh -huh. <laughs> figure out how to navigate the world mm -hmm. in general. 
um, that we were able to be that resource right. for, for the students, students um, even to a greater extent than, than we typically, because again, we realized that everybody was, um, was struggling, but also normalizing it and say, hey, we're all trying to figure Put this it out. out, so if you, if you do need to, you know, any kind of, like a leave of absence, or whatever it is that you need, and we, we, we support So you were extra that. supportive, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we were all... Um, what are the costs associated with offering this online? No different from traditional. Traditional. Okay. Um, the cost hasn't changed. Are there any particular benefits in terms of that might or that um, kind of offset the cost? Like you mentioned, access being something that students really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Are there particular advantages that you feel like make whatever cost might be associated worth it? I mean, to the online piece. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think for students, the ex expense maybe that comes with having to be on campus. Okay. Um, and then you and get to reach the faculty as well. And I get to reach the faculty, wherever they are. Um, and then it would be interesting to see, because I know that really made a difference. The last semester, for example, they had 350 hours of practical. Oh. Um, the first two cohorts had to do all of it in person, whereas Post-COVID, for example, those who have like a full client load from Ministry of Social Development, mm -hmm. a lot of that could be done at home. Right. So not having to right. be meeting clients, you know, all over. Um, what is another thing that we... Oh, we got... We, we provided phones. We provided Ooh. cell phones for, our, um, for students on practicum. Wow. Right. So... Because again, you didn't want to, you, you wanted to make sure any barriers that persons have to get therapy. Mm -hmm. Because remember, this is, we're trying to, we're, we're providing this, hoping we can help persons who normally wouldn't be able to mm -hmm. access care, right? Um, you didn't want it to be a case where I can't call because I don't have credit. Right. So it was the psychologist in training doing the calling. So oh, okay. to give them phones and put the credits okay. on there and yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So when you think about the effort in terms of, you know, like getting phones or trying to be creative with engaging the students, like all the things we discussed, did that impact or does it impact your willingness to offer the program in a format that's hybrid? I'm I'm much more open to it now. Okay. Because now I see one, the benefits. Um, on both sides, because mm -hmm. as, as, as we mentioned, as, as we discussed, being able to access the persons who want to help us with this program or faculty, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. um, but also just kind of reminder how we can we can pivot, we can adapt. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, there's no going back from this now. Okay. It is going to be hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. you mentioned graduate school being very supportive. I'd like to talk more about support. Mm -hmm. But how do you identify areas for development for your faculty related to online teaching? Like, for example, do they self-report? Do you... It's So, yeah, so I haven't been intentional about okay. that. Okay. So if a, a faculty member would reach out and say, okay, I'm having problems with X, Y, and Z, then mm -hmm. we problem solve. Okay. But I have, so I've been more reactive okay. than proactive. Yeah. So describe your experience with institutional training and support, whether it's in mm -hmm. technical, instructional, or anything like that that's been provided in the transition to online. I mean, ECT was phenomenal. They, oh my God. <laughs> I remember talking to TN and I was like, how did you guys do this? Because they were very accessible. Mm -hmm. um, all of the webinars and stuff that they did was just, it was timely, it was relevant, it mm -hmm. was up. Um, and yeah, there were, there were hiccups here. Because again, we were all trying to, you know, to make that shift. But no, they were phenomenal. Okay. They were phenomenal. Um, how else do you feel like you could have been supported if, you know, some of the limitations were perhaps not in place? Um... What I wish is that we could have provided maybe laptops for, okay. yeah, like the students who didn't, mm -hmm. who didn't have working ones at the time. Um, and I know, I know IT services had laptops for students, but right. again, it was trying to help we access that, mm -hmm. and yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, do you incentivize 
the faculty to teach online. And that need not be financial incentive. Mm-hmm. But other than a huge thank you at the end. Well, a huge thank you can be a, a major incentive. And then, if, here's the thing though. I mm-hmm. think when our faculty see the impact mm-hmm. of our grads, mm-hmm. let me give you an example. Last term, one of the courses that was taught was taught by the grads of the first cohort. Oh, that's so nice. And that is our goal. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. And this, is, this needs to be sustainable. <laughs> and so what we, we want to, that's what we want to see. Mm-hmm. We want to see that come full circle. Um, so yeah, that was, and we talk about that all the time. We have students who are working on a PhD right now. And mm-hmm. whenever they would publish an article and send it to me, I would send it to the faculty. Okay. And they're always like, oh. So the actual <laughs> seeing the benefits of yeah. it has been impactful. Yeah. So did the support that you were able to provide for your faculty, like when they reached out with concerns, or the amazing support you got from ECT impact your decision to stay online post-pandemic? Um, I think, again, that was still on a kind of needs basis. Okay. Like, like faculty who, who, needed it. who left and, and needed it. And then I had a faculty member who brought on uh, a colleague who's based in Miami. Mm-hmm. So again, all of that. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of performance, mm-hmm. how has online education impacted enrollment and retention, if at all? Uh, I'm not sure what it has. Okay. Um, our attrition rate is still 0.01%. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, Do you think if it was in person, perhaps m- most students would have to leave due to their commitments or no? Well, the first two cohorts, we had no attrition. Okay. And then, and that was all in person. Okay. Right? So, um, and because, again, it's not fully online, then it would yeah. be hard to say. Yeah whether in, in terms of recruitment, right. that would make a difference. Right. Right? Um, I'm sure we'll be able to reach a lot more persons in the region if we were fully online. Okay. Um, that way they don't have to take yeah. up roots and, and come to Grenada. But we're not quite, we can, we're not quite there yet. I think what, what needs to happen, and, and long-term goal, establishing more partnerships, because right now we have partnerships in Barbados, we have... Um, in St. Vincent, mm-hmm. but we will need to have partnerships in all of the islands students are coming from yeah. for that to happen. Because again, we have to make sure in terms of the quality of product mm-hmm. that we have um, and making sure that students are getting the relevant practical experience, all of that stuff needs to be right. Yeah. So what factors impact student satisfaction in your program? Um, we do, so here's, we, we do an exit interview with each student mm-hmm. once they've completed the mm-hmm. program. And what, one of the, the common threads that comes out is that they feel that they've gained not just professional development, but personal growth. Oh. And that, but that, but that was intentional. Yeah. That was, we built that in mm-hmm. to the program. Um. Because walking out of this, going into providing psychological support for others out there, you've got to be in touch with yourself a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that's one of the things that, that always come up. I'm okay. so appreciative of, yes, I'm walking out of a degree. I feel that I now have the skill to do this, mm-hmm. but I also feel that I've worked on myself. Okay. One of the things we also do is that we make a commitment to provide clinical supervision two years post graduation. Oh, okay. Again, faculty. So I guess my question is: Has there been anything from those exit interviews that have, like, student feedback that then caused any program level changes? Yeah. So the first cohort, the way that we were offering a couple of the courses, they suggested that it would have made sense for this to happen after that. Mm -hmm. And we made that change. Um, And and students who took it after can't even (laughs) fathom any other way. Okay. Um, 
there was something else. There were a couple of things. But yeah, we, I mean, we look at we look at the, the student feedback. Okay. At the end of the day, it's their experience. What we also do, we, we have a mentorship program, right? So when you enroll in the program, you then connect it to somebody who's been there, done that. Okay. So, so that's nice. Yeah. So they're very supported. Yeah. So in terms of social influence, so that's kind of like the environmental factors, like, you know, the coworkers, leaders, and all that. How much, is that with students, how mm-hmm. much do you think students expect you to offer this program in a hybrid format or to give them some pieces online? I think that expectation now is it's there. Is there. It's, it's like, duh, you know, <laughs> we know we can do it, so <laughs> why not? Um, I actually have a, I had a student in this current cohort who said, oh, if I had known this class was going to be online, I would have stayed home. She's not from Grenada. Uh-huh. And I said, but this other class is also happening this year. <laughs> this semester is not coming. Like, oh, yeah, this is <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, th- I think the expectation is there. Okay. That, that, yeah. What about your colleagues, like in the School of Graduate Studies or in the program? What are, what are their expectations in terms of the amount of teaching that's done online? Mm-hmm. I think the School of Graduate Studies is it's an expectation. Okay. Um, because many of the programs being offered in School of Graduate Studies are for persons who are employed and mm-hmm. yeah so when I think of MPH MBA <coughs> masters and masters of science they're all offered online so how prevalent is online or hybrid education in the masters level of, when it comes to teaching psychology is that common it is common okay it is common and um, and I think for many of the schools that were kind of my way of thinking in terms of this has to be done in person have also made that shift to hybrid. But I mean, getting a master's in psychology online, it, it is common. Now, having said that, because our program is set up a little different um, in terms of the psychological assessing, um, you're going to find that a lot of master's programs online don't mm-hmm. necessarily offer that piece. Okay. So we're, we're different in that way. So, do you feel like the regional standards or regulations, like accreditation, for example, mm-hmm. do you think they're supportive when it comes to offering pieces online or pieces hybrid? That's something I have, I haven't looked at since, okay. since the pandemic. Um, even when we were putting the program together and kind of comparing offerings in other parts of the region, um, I mean, I still stand by the fact that we provide a superior <laughs> product. Okay. Um, but I really haven't looked at to see if anything has changed Okay. in terms of, um, I mean, the conversation is always there it's in terms of making sure that whatever you're providing, whether, not that you pivot to online or hybrid, the quality, mm-hmm. the quality has to be there. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is the final question, actually. Do you have a preference for teaching online, teaching hybrid, teaching in person? I prefer in person. Why? I prefer. In, I. It, it comes back to that one-on-one, um, that engagement. I. I'll do online if I need to. Mm-hmm. Um, I see the value in hybrid. I mm-hmm. see the value in online. Um, but personally, if I have a choice, I teach in person. Um, just to change a little bit in school of medicine, when we had the option of the persons who wanted to return to campus and teach. Mm-hmm. Be, I was ready because <laughs> I was sick of being at home. Um, kind of everything happening at home. Mm-hmm. Home needs to be that, there needs to be that demarcation of mm-hmm. what's, where home is and where work is. Mm-hmm. Um, so even if coming back on, so even if we, we were online, but I was teaching from here mm-hmm. made a difference for me. Okay. Because here, this is work. Right. Right. Um, but I was also glad to get back in front of the front of the classroom. And yeah. Okay. So based on everything we discussed, do you feel mm-hmm. like there's anything that you wanted to say or add to the conversation or to these pieces, or do you feel like you you've covered it? Yeah, I think we've I think we've covered it. Okay. So, thank you very much. I'm gonna stop the recording.